Good morning guys, my name is Vandolf. In this video we will extend our simple library program that we created from before. As, as you can see, our new program will be able to handle user imports and exports of video, image, and sound files. Now this sounds like a lot of work and before you get intimidated, let me just say that it is a lot simpler than you might think. All we're going to do is add a new class that has a couple of methods in it and add a couple of new methods in our, ex in our existing class. So without further ado, let's open up our library project that we created from the previous videos. Now before we add a new class, head on over to mainsystem.java. Let's add new choices for the user. Now, so just enter this. Um, the new choice is going to be enter 4 for add video image music and we're just gonna call this VIS for video image music so enter 4 for add video image music or this file to book and really it doesn't really matter if it's a video image music as long as it's a file we're gonna be able to store and open it but just for this example let's just store and open video image and music just to keep things simple and we're also going to give the user the option to import these these are uh, these files and we really should say instead of add we should say save import and save and for the fifth option we're gonna say enter five for export no load and export VIS files VIS file from book and play it and these are the only two uh, new features that our extended library program is going to have. So go on over and we're going to create a case statement for those. So case for break. Again, we're just going to do stuff here. Case 5 do stuff then break and um, yeah that should be it for now in our main system java you know what guys let's actually change this this to a uh, vim I don't know why I called it this. I I believe I uh, I said sound, but let's just call it Vim for video image and music. So now we're ready to create our new class. But first, before we create our new class, what is our new class going to be? Now remember, we have a book class and a library class. Now we're going to create a class that can store video, image, and music. And we're going to call this class Vim. <clears throat> so go on over and 
go on over to your package explorer and right click on the default package and new class we're going to call this new class vim hit finish there we go and just I'm just gonna drag this vim over here because I'm um, again I'm OCD I like to keep things in order now when I said keep things in order if you if you take a look over here book is before library why is that why did I put book before library not only because I'm OCD but I did that for a reason it's because book is inside library library can contain many books as you can see here and now now that we have a vim class a vim object which we're gonna put inside our book remember our new application can contain many many uh, vim files many video image music files inside each book so this vim file this vim class is going to be inside our book class just like our book class is inside our library class so our book.java is going to have a list of vim objects and just import list Again, make sure that it comes from java.util. Now, head on over to our new Vim class. Again, this class also needs to be serializable, so we need to say it implements serializable. Because it's inside because our book class is using this Vim class. <clears throat> so what does our new Vim class need? Well, we're going to need a string, private string name. And we're also going to need the actual data that we're going to store. And we're going to store that data in, a, in the form of a byte array. And it might sound complex and complicated, but trust me, it's not. So we're just going to declare private byte array. And we're going to call this byte array data. And this is all that our Vim class is going to have. This is all its attributes. Now let's create the default constructor. Let's also create our non-default constructor which of course takes in a string name and a byte array data from my previous video I said that it was bad practice to uh, put the parameter name the same as the attribute name but now that I think about it, it's not really bad practice as long as you know what you're doing. So we're going to keep doing that because it looks a lot cleaner. Again, in order to refer to this name, the attribute, the book attribute, we're going to say this dot name and just set this dot name equal to this parameter name over here. And we're going to do the same for the second parameter. <clears throat> 